anyways, this is a little introduction to my Scanny Folk Tunes videos. I thought it was better to put like all the disclaimer and explaining how the system works stuff in one separate video instead of repeating every time. And this, you're supposed to have seen this video before watching and especially before commenting the Scandi Folk Tunes videos. So I don't have to repeat myself. <laughs> So I'm gonna teach you tunes, basically, and which type of tunes? Well, I'm gonna try to cover many different types and to give you many different interesting things. I'm gonna teach you tunes both that are very well known and some that are not so well known at all. And also I'm gonna try to teach you stuff that I find fun, that I find are good tunes. But fun doesn't mean that they don't have a technical purpose as well. I'm gonna especially try to like bind them with the Scandi Folk Nerd videos so you actually have concrete tunes to work on technical stuff that I just talked about that you are working on at the moment. Uh, also, I'm gonna classify those tunes in five different levels of difficulty. Um, this is very subjective, of course. Um, and it's gonna be based on one instrument, Nikal Harpa. So it might be very different if you play another instrument. Basically, level 1, very easy, level 2, a little less easy, level 3, middle difficulty, and that's where the climbing begins on the Kaharpa, so not all tunes on level 3 are gonna have some climbs, but they might. Level 4, difficult, a lot of climbing, level 5, very difficult, and I don't think level 5, I actually will use it for my tunes, but it's there, in case. So that's just a guideline, so if you're a beginner, just don't start with level 4 or 5 or something because it's gonna be too hard. If you're an advanced player, I suggest that you still play the level 1 and 2 because a very easy tune can be super good to play. Also, I'm not gonna give you any sheet music because folk music is not transcribed very well at all into sheet music. The rhythmical variations, especially like the specificities and also the swing and the details and so on, are very hard, if not impossible, to put on paper. So sheet music is just a way of remembering tunes, but you can't really learn folk music from sheet music. So I'm not gonna give you sheet music. Basically, if you really, 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 really need and want a sheet music for a tune, you can always ask me kindly, and if I have it, I will give it. But before doing that, please Google yourself the name of the tune and try to find the sheet music yourself, because very often it's on the internet somewhere. Also, I highly suggest that you actually learn by ear and by eyes for the bowings. And if you have trouble doing that, if you're new to learning by ear, you can always slow down the YouTube versions with the slow down button that is in the settings. Now, that's a very useful tool. Now, the last thing I want to tell you is more general about folk repertoire. It's basically that you are going to meet different versions of tunes. You're going to meet different information about them. You're gonna meet people who have the same tune as you, but with another name. You're gonna meet people who have the same name for a tune that is actually a different tune. Sometimes tunes are gonna be extremely close and you don't know if it's the same tune or two different ones that are very similar. You're also gonna meet different regional variations of the same tune. All this makes folk music very varied and that's normal. Because folk music is played by people. It's transmitted from musician to musician and every one of those musicians is putting some bits of themselves into the music. I am doing that. You are going to do that with your tunes. Everyone does, more or less, but everyone does. So, folk music is not set in stone. It's evolving with all the people playing it. It's folk music. It's the music of the people. It's not, yeah, it's not set in stone. It's not just on paper. It's living. It's alive. It's evolving. And there is no such thing as right or wrong. Except in one very particular case, if someone has composed a tune and we have a recording of this person playing this very tune, then that is canon. That is the right way of playing it. But except for that very specific case, there is no right or wrong. There are many versions and they are all fine. I have one valse, I have it in seven different versions and apparently they're all traditionals. So, don't get mad at people who have a different version than you have. Don't get mad at me because I taught you a version that someone else told you is wrong. <laughs> also, don't let other people be mad at you because you have a different version. Don't fight over those things. Please, <laughs> please don't. Consider it in another way. Consider it as a very good chance because you can actually learn those new variations 
and you can expand your playing, you can make it more interesting, you can vary your playing and that's just great. So celebrate this complexity and don't fight over it, please, please. And that's it. I hope you will enjoy a lot of those Scandi Folk Tunes videos. I'm very, very waiting for them to be released.